Okay, good afternoon everybody, and what's today's topic? Well, I had a couple of requests from somebody. Can I explain to them how I made some of these cactuses that I make out of horseshoes? Because they don't find that it's such an easy process or an easy thing to do. It isn't just, you know, tack welding a bunch of horseshoes together. And I said, sure. And I answered some questions and stuff, and I kept a uh, record of them. And I thought, well, let me just do a short video or you know, whatever I can and explain it a little bit better. Maybe the first thing you're going to need to do is get some horseshoes. So where are you going to get them from? Well, you got Craigslist, eBay has them, maybe a local farrier or somebody. Now I get mine for free because I trade the farrier projects. I do things for the farrier. They give me tons of horseshoes. I use those horseshoes then to, you know, make different little artistic things. I either give them away, I sell them, you know, whatever. And that's what I do with the horseshoes that I get. But the first thing I do is I compile a great big pile of them like you see here in the picture. And when I get a chance, I cut all the nails off of them. And I clean them up. And I use my bench grinder with a wire wheel on there. And I don't knock off a ton of the debris, but I knock off most of it. Um, I guess in a way, it's a way of weld prepping too because it cleans the metal for welding. But then I throw them down and when I accumulate enough of them now I make these cactuses anywhere from six to seven and a half feet tall it's got two big arms one on each side and I'll show you some pictures in a minute and an approximate guess I'm using around 200 horseshoes let's say so I use the number 200 and I wait until I have about that many now the next step in this you've already you know like I said cut the nails off you cleaned them up Horses are a lot like people in a way. Uh, that sounds funny, but their feet are different sizes. That's the reason why farriers have got these mobile forges and they bend them and they tweak them to a particular horse's foot. Um, so they're not going to all be the same is what I'm trying to say. So then I start putting them into piles, ones that are very close and very similar in shape and size. And I do that with just a whole bunch of them until I have piles and piles of them together. And there's a reason for that, that as you create each circle, when you're making this cactus, the dimensions can change on you real easily and you're going to become really frustrated. You're not going to want to do it because, Hey, they're not lining up. I'm, it's not coming out level. I've got too much of a gap or there's too much overlap. I don't know what to do. And you start running into all these problems. And the reason why is because they're all different sizes. So you can't just take a bunch of horseshoes and start welding them together and think it's going to come out, you know, aesthetically good looking. So you have to spend the time and kind of organize everything correctly before you start the welding. Now I'm going to take this picture down and I'll throw up a couple of when and how I start these projects or these cactuses. Give me one sec. Okay, so let's take a look at these two pictures. Now, the first thing I do when I go out to the steel supply yard, I look around for a base. Now, it could be like, you know, a half round piece of steel from a tank that they cut. It could be anything. This is diamond plate, and it's probably about an eighth of an inch thick. It's nice, thick, solid piece of steel. And so this is what I use for the base. So I go ahead and I bring it home and then I start my circle of horseshoes. So the best way to start this circle, start off with a piece of wood, whether it's a log or something like that. Now it doesn't have to be exactly a perfect circle. Um, if you used a log or something like that, I would make it several inches tall and just cut the log or anything that you can. I use wood, I mean, as my template to start this. So what I do with that first row is with that piece of wood, like on my welding bench, I start lining up that first row of horseshoes. Now what I find works for me, okay, now it may not work for everybody else, is the method that I'm describing and I use nine horseshoes in a circle. I think that that gives it a really nice, like, you know, bulky looking trunk. So that's the reason why I like using nine. Now you can use eight, you can use six, you can use whatever you want. It's your project. But don't get frustrated. The first thing in this whole thing is you have to get off your rear end and actually go out there and start doing it. And if you mess up, use your angle grinder with a cutoff wheel, cut the weld, start over, and remember to tack weld everything at first because it's a lot easier to knock off a tack weld or cut through it 
than if you've done you know some full-blown bead so you can see in the picture over here which is a little bit clearer on the left where I built those circles now the next one you can use that same wood template and do it again and then after you made the circle set it on that first circle or and I've done this before or you can do them one at a time um, like I was saying and you can use a level a little torpedo level or a longer level and as you complete each row and you're going make sure that everything stays level from one side to the other and that's the reason why it requires a little bit of tweaking sometimes you have to lift up on one and kind of fill the gap with weld and you have to play around there's there, there's so many little variables in this sometimes I have to bend the horseshoe in a little bit that's pretty easy to do in a vise with a you know a heavy hammer and you keep playing around and you build each one of these rows and you make them nice and straight and you can do it by eye it doesn't have to be like super exact and you just keep working on these rows and don't be in a rush but the biggest thing is you have to really get out there and actually start doing it and then you'll see it starts to come together after a while and you'll figure things out as you go so I'm going to throw up a picture of the completed project so we don't make the video long and we'll go right to questions. Hang on just a sec. Okay, let's just go ahead and jump to questions and answers. It's a lot easier, I think, because it is what it is. It's a cactus made out of horseshoes and I've already described, I mean, how you can do these circles. You can do them freehand. That's a little harder, especially if you're just doing the base. I would use a round piece of wood and start your first circle. After that, if you keep using that wood piece uh, that I'm telling you about and you keep welding circles, when you go to stack them, you could have difficulty lining them up. So the last set that I made, I tried it another way and I just did my first row from a wood template and then I started doing all the other rows by just setting them on there and tack welding them. Now remember the word tack weld in case you have to bend it a little to the left, bend it a little to the right. And then I would do like the opposite side I'd put one on one side, one on the opposite side, and I'd set a level on there just to keep things kind of plumb and level as I'm going up. Once you have one on the each opposite side, you can start filling in in between. This can get hard to do because, like I said, horseshoes are different sizes. So you can just start however you want and start playing around and don't get frustrated. It's a matter of sometimes I have to take them back off. It's not working and I have to bend some horseshoes and I have to play around. So this is not an easy project. It's not a hard project in terms of technical ability. It's just labor intensive is what I'm trying to say here. Um, next question is how do I charge for these? Okay, well, let's say you bought the horseshoes off of eBay as an example and you're gonna spend a, well over a dollar something each or right around a dollar. Um, now, if you get them from a farrier and you trade or whatever, you might get them cheaper. Let's just use a dollar, okay? And I need 200 of them. So there's $200 right there before I even start. Now, I throw in a figure of $30 on top of that for, you know, MIG wire and another 30 just to be safe for the gas that I'm using, um, you know, off of my MIG welder. So now you're up to about 260 I throw on another 40 for the plate steel or the diamond plate, which more than covers it but let's just say um, in a roundabout way I'm into it at $300 now that's the deposit I want up front before I even attempt to build these because I don't want to get stuck buying everything and having somebody go well gee I don't have the money so at $300 there I multiply that times three nine hundred so I'm looking at nine hundred to a thousand dollars for one of these cactuses that are about um, the one here on the right and the left the tall one that's about seven foot six inches tall. So, and that's what I sold the one for. I sold it for 950. So, 900 to 1,000. I mean, gives you a rough idea on pricing. Now, that's how I do it. Maybe you can get more. Maybe you got to take a little bit less. Things get negotiable because it's not something I want to build and have just sitting around waiting to be sold. So, I only build these off of pictures that I've done, and people give me deposits. I mean, that's just the way that I do it. I'm not in production. I'm not running a retail store, so it's just the way I do it. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, well, I kind of already answered the question. I mean, how do you get your hand in there once it's in the ground to plant the plant? Take a look at the base here and look at one of those bottom horseshoes. All I did is I cut it free 
and I welded a hinge, a little tiny hinge uh, made out of steel. You can get them at Lowe's, you can get them at Home Depot, you can get them anywhere. And I welded that hinge on there so that one horseshoe opens and closes. That's enough room for me to stick my hand in there and plant the plant or do whatever I have to do. And then you just close it. And because you've cut it free, you know, from this base, I mean, it's easy to open and close it and make it look like, you know, it was welded there. And I usually do it to the side or the back. I mean, one or the other, but it's, it's real easy. Um, it, it was something that I just did at the spur of the moment. How did I cut the hole? Okay, I used a plasma cutter. Um, now, you can use anything, I mean, around your shop, I mean, to cut the hole. The hole's going to be hidden once it's on the ground anyway. You don't necessarily need a plasma cutter. You could use a jigsaw. You could use your four and a half inch angle grinder with a cutoff wheel on there and just cut a big square hole. It doesn't have to be this round hole like I did. You know, you just make the hole any size you want it. I did it for the reason of being able to plant a plant. If you don't want to plant a plant, you can just leave it solid. And, uh, you know, I had a friend, the one that I did this other one for, he made a concrete base. He used two by fours. He dug like a hole, a square hole in the ground, set them in there. He poured concrete. He had like a couple of bolt holes and I had to drill holes in one of these plates because he wanted to actually set it on the concrete pad and anchor it. That's a good idea, uh, a little more time consuming, but you can do things like that. Or if you have a space in your yard where there's no moisture, um, you could do it that way too. But uh, this is just the way I did it. Okay, I threw up another one in the middle. This is the shorter one showing you where I, you know, I put it in relation to my wall. And I did the same thing, you know, I put that vining plant in there. Um, of course, like I said, you can do this any way you want to your project, but my hope is, is the vine will grow up in through here and I'll trim it eventually and hopefully it makes it look green and kind of cool looking. One of the other questions is, aren't you worried about this thing rusting out? Well, yeah and no, I also put it in a part of my yard where um, there really isn't much water and I did use epoxy primer. I put a bunch of coats on there, but yes, it's still going to get to the steel. It's still going to rust. I assume somewhere way down the line, I'll probably have problems, but you know, I've got the, uh, you know, I've got a torch. I've got a MIG welder. I mean, I can always repair things. I like how they came out. I liked how I planted them next to the walls. So for right now, I mean, this works for me and uh, I'll let you know about problems going forward. That's it for this video. Um, if you got any other questions, I mean, you can drop them in the comments below. I'm the Home Handyman, and I hope you click subscribe and keep following me, and I'll keep doing these videos as work lets me. All right, you folks have a good day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.